welcome to Let's Code. So I'm here with my buddy Mike and uh, we are going to try and write something in Go and I want to just dive into it and see how far we can get. And we'll, we'll say a bit more about the process uh, as we go but basically my idea is uh, to make a Lunar Lander game. Uh, where, do you know what I mean by that Mike? I'm assuming you mean uh, landing on the moon. Yep, pretty much. Yes. Uh, so this is a really old game, and uh, I've seen a YouTube video of this running on a mainframe system from the 60s. Um, and I'm pretty sure I also played this game on a Sinclair ZX81 in 1981. <laughs> Basically, the, the idea is you've got your lander, you know, it's at a certain altitude above the moon, and uh, it's firing its engines, so it's falling under the guidance of Isaac Newton. And uh, the idea is basically you have to not crash. <laughs> so, you know, you want a landing you can walk away from. I probably uh, that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I haven't prepared anything about this because I thought it might be quite fun to just see how you know how you, how you go about designing a program when you don't really know what it's supposed to do yet which is usually the case for us isn't it sure yeah for sure right. but we have a vague idea what we want but we don't have all the requirements and we don't have flow charts and uml diagrams and all of this so have to uh acknowledge the inspiration of francesc campoy here with his great just for funk series have you seen those mike they're really good. Uh, I was looking at his context package explanation the other day. Yeah, exactly. So uh, some of the ones he does, uh, the early ones in the Just for Funk series, are really great because he just dives in and starts doing stuff. It's like let's let's write a Flappy Bird game, or uh, let's. I think one of them is like I'm going to hook up my doorbell so that my smart doorbell, so it calls my phone and I can speak to the person at the door. <laughs> <laughs> via my phone by hooking up various cloud APIs and things. And uh, what I loved about it was he just kind of piles in, you know, um, and tries to figure out something. And you see all of the false steps and mistakes and things. All of the learning opportunities. Yeah. And that's what I found the most inspiring as a beginner was seeing him is obviously a very experienced programmer, but he's just kind of screwing up and making mistakes and getting compiler errors and stuff. And I was like, I get those. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, my my code doesn't work when I write it either, so I'm, I'm operating on the same level as him, you know, mm -hmm. um, which I found quite encouraging. So I thought it might be quite nice for people to see that, um, and there will definitely be a ton of mistakes. So what I thought we'd do is I'll start with um, what I call my shoddy main dot go technique, except I don't use the word shoddy, but the idea is, you know, we would like to create a beautiful package with tests and API and all of this, and we will. But first of all, we have to figure out what it's even vaguely going to be about. Right. So we need something. So let's make a main.go. And let's see if we can get it to do anything. So uh, where could we start? Well, we could start by maybe saying we have, uh, it's all about a particular number, isn't it? Which is our altitude above the surface. Sure. When, when that gets to zero, we want to basically not be traveling too fast. Uh, and we also want to get there. So suppose we have some variable alt, which starts at, let's say, I don't know what, um, what this should actually start at. Um, let's say something like 100 kilometers. So uh, let's write it like this. Um, so this would be in meters. Because uh, I'm British. Uh, good job I'm not in charge of the uh, computer code for the lunar module. <laughs> or it probably would have crashed since they would be working in feet. And I'd be oh. working in meters. Um, yeah, working meters. Actually, 38, 35,000 kilometers. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, and we need some kind of loop. So that's easy in Go because there's only one kind of loop, so we don't have to worry about what kind it is. So what's the loop condition? Well, let's say it's greater than zero, right? If it reaches zero, or if it's less than zero, then uh, the game's over one way or the other, isn't it? Whether we walk away or not. Correct. Never actually got a chance to start. Yeah, so... <laughs> Alright, what do we need to do? It's greater than zero. We should track where we are, so that we start taking off. Well, we, we start at, uh, you know, the point where Mission Control says you go for powered descent, um, activate the descent engine, and um, we're now sort of falling freely, um, but we can use the engine to slow ourselves down. So, so, yeah, suppose we just started by imagining we don't have any engine and we're just free, freely falling. Um, and let's ignore gravity as well. So let's assume our let's assume our velocity is constant. Um, so let's have a variable for that. Let's make this colon equals. Let's make velocity equal, should we say, minus 100 meters a second, something like that. Well, it's going to take a thousand seconds. Um, let's let's start at 1,000 meters. <laughs> um, okay, so each time around the loop, let's subtract, or actually we should add our velocity, shouldn't we? Which is negative. In fact, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, design point, isn't it? Is what in terms of our coordinates, if you like, what should they be relative to? Because uh, we don't want to land in a body of water. Yeah, quite right. And I think in Apollo, um, when the spacecraft was near Earth, the coordinates were relative to Earth. And when they were nearer the moon, they used the moon as the reference point, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in Elite, your ship was the origin, so everything was calculated in terms of how far it is away from you, which makes it a lot easier to draw things on the screen. Um, so let's say, uh, let's be like Apollo, insofar as we know, and say, you know, we're going to, as pretending we're the spacecraft, uh, we'll store information about our altitude relative to the moon and how fast we're moving. So should we just print it out every time to see what's happening? And uh, let's sleep for a second. So it's more fun to watch. Okay, are we ready to try this yet? We should get Let's have a look. This is the world's worst Lunar Lander game. <laughs> no, no player interaction whatsoever, right? You just crash. That's it. Hey, it's working. Nice. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> you give me an engine, and we're done here. <laughs> so yeah, excellent. And it, yeah, we, propulsion, so we don't actually crash into the ground and zero. Yeah, and we notice we also have collision detection, so it correctly realizes. We've reached the moon. Contact light. Houston Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. So, and this is an example of the type of thing I'm talking about, where if we have some idea that we want to do, and we know we, we can't just sit down and write the whole idea straight off. The question is, what can we do? Um, and... This is a really powerful technique, which I use all the time. It's basically whenever I can't figure out how to do what it is I need to do, I just think, well, what simpler thing could I do? You know, if I can't write a lunar landing simulation, could I just simulate a body crashing onto the moon? Yes, apparently I can. So let's add acceleration in now because we know gravity is a thing. Right. Um, 
Uh, my physics is a little bit rusty, but I think it should be enough. And uh, classical physics will be fine. We don't need relativity because they didn't they didn't use it on Apollo. <laughs> so apparently, you know, Newtonian physics is good enough to get you to the moon. Um, uh, so calculate our average velocity, which should be our final velocity minus our starting velocity. So uh, what is that? Yeah, well, suppose, suppose we just consider what happens if the ship is, it's, it's in the air or in space, if you like, it's descending at 100 meters a second. Um, and it's also under some acceleration. So it's under the acceleration of gravity from the moon. Sure. Um, um, which, which actually is just, the acceleration just tells you how the velocity is changing over time, doesn't it? Sure. So we could say, suppose the velocity is getting 10% faster every second. Mm. You know, that's not the right number, but that's, that's the right kind of behavior, isn't it? So let's right. say acceleration is 1.1, let's say. So each game tick, if you like, we update our altitude, update our velocity, will be a time sequence and let's print out the velocity as well so we can see it okay I think we're gonna hit the moon somewhat faster this time or not at all yeah, it's a float 64 yeah that makes sense yeah everything should be a float shouldn't it we're in the world of physics, so we're dealing with real numbers here. So let's fix that. Oh, it's working, yeah. Velocity is getting bigger. Great. <laughs> so we, we made a 143 meter crater. <laughs> and we were moving pretty fast by the time we hit. So, uh, so that's not bad, though, is it? I mean, we've got something happening. I'm quite yep. pleased with this. Um, yep. So what should we do next? So we've got our altitude, and we've got our velocity. Uh, we know what our acceleration is. Uh, maybe we should counter that with some braking. Yes. How do we do that? Let's see. So if our velocity is going up, we need to add some resistance. Mm -hmm. So maybe we do a counter velocity variable? Yeah, so if, if we imagine we have an engine which is pointing down and it, it generates some thrust, that's really just another way of saying acceleration, isn't it? Yeah. So that, that acts against the acceleration due to gravity. So suppose, uh, for example, it exactly balanced gravity, then we would just be hovering, wouldn't we? Yes. So how about if we had something called thrust, let's say, and we treat it as a multiplier, a bit like acceleration. Now, that's, that's not right, but we'll fix it later. Sure. Um, let's say... a little bit more than our acceleration. Yeah, or maybe, um, yeah, so actually, yeah, this, this shouldn't be a multiplier because, um, so for example, on Earth, acceleration due to gravity is about 10 meters per second a second yeah. isn't it so if you start off at zero after one second you'll be doing 10 meters a second mm -hmm. after two seconds you'll be doing 20 meters a second and so forth um so let's say let's say it's that so let's say this is this is meters per second per second so 
Let's make that change. Let's ignore thrust for the moment. So, uh, our velocity is negative, indicating that we're moving down. Makes yeah. sense. So add it to our altitude. And then add our acceleration to our velocity. Yeah. However, we can't just add it because that would make it less negative. So let's say that the acceleration is negative. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's accelerating us downwards. Sure. Yes. So now adding it, so minus 100 plus minus 10 is minus 110. So that makes sense. So this should more or less work, shouldn't it? Yep. We're going faster. Great. Okay. So you said add some thrust. Uh, it's also acceleration, but just, you know, in the opposite direction. So let's say that's, for simplicity, let's say it's 10. So we should be hovering, shouldn't we? Right. Uh, and let's do the same thing here. So plus equals thrust. Or you could just say acceleration minus thrust or something, but never mind, that's a refactoring. Uh, let's see if we can hover then. Not exactly. No, we're <laughs> now we're, uh... oh. we're we're descending yeah. gracefully and and in a stately fashion. Yeah. Um, but our velocity is is off. Yeah. So the, this <laughs> the, this makes sense though because if we'd started at zero velocity, we would have stayed that way. Sure. The fact is we were moving before and now there's zero net acceleration on us so we continue yeah. with that velocity yeah. which yeah. makes sense so suppose the thrust is say 20 so we should stop going downwards and then we should hover and then we should start going upwards shouldn't we yeah. let's find out but will we hit the ground first <laughs> <laughs> um no. Oh, yeah, we're so, going back up. Yeah, so we executed a missed approach. Yeah. So now we need to... And now we're going to be lost in space forever, so we better, <laughs> better stop that. But that's encouraging, isn't it? Because yeah, for sure. this code so kind of makes sense to me. Conditionals. Yeah. That when we get to a a certain altitude need to gracefully bring our velocity down as well as set it down on the on the surface yeah so i think the way the original game worked is each step um, it asks you to put in what's your value for the engine thrust you can imagine neil armstrong sitting there with his hand on the lever you know um, and that's fine, so we can do that, but I also envisaged, you know, real-time strategy game where you could actually press a key to, like, increase thrust. You know, you could have up and down be increase and decrease thrust. Yeah. So you can sort of fly it down yourself. Um, should we try it with just asking the user each time? Yes. Because that's the most basic game, isn't it? Let's see how that goes. So we don't need to sleep anymore because we're prompting. Um, enter thrust setting. Uh, this is unlikely to be a big hit in the mobile game market. Um, but you never know. Um, in the line for the... Try and make it on the same line. So we can do scan. Yep, line. Yep. Scan. Ellen. Scan yep. line, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, what does scan do? Just reads everything until end of file. Yeah, okay. So, so scan line, so it'll be like type of value and press enter, won't it? Yeah. So is this like. Um, 
Do we need? Do we need that? Uh, what this? Oh, it takes. Just point that to the thrust variable. Yeah, how does this work? So you put a ampersand thrust. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're going to read that value. Yeah. And then we could use it. Let's start at zero, and let's uh, let's put the thrust setting. Actually, I think you you. I mean, you don't actually have to initialize thrust. You can just uh, your bar thrust is the integer or float sixty four. Right, indeed. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's we we might want to initialize it to something else. So sure. let's yeah. keep that for now. Let's see what happens. Ooh, great. Okay. The adrenaline is actually building now. I can feel it. Um, uh, let's say zero. Let's descend a little more. Oh, we descended quite a bit. Okay. Should we give it a little bit of thrust? Yep. Uh, velocity is stable now, so let's reduce it a bit bit more <laughs> this may not be enough <laughs> uh, we, yeah so the trouble is I the, the maximum thrust I have available is 10 right. and we're accelerating at 10 all the time right. so the only thing I can do is just stop increasing speed I can't actually reduce speed so okay oh, whoa <laughs> we, wow. made a, we made That's a big a jump Big crater. Okay, so so the first thing is we um, we need to detect. We sh how about we do the update after the prompts? Yes. So the problem is then we don't actually see ourselves land, do we? So. Yeah, we could. You could print that out while it's doing it. this will yeah I'm not going to worry about that for now let's just tweak the um, parameters a little bit so let's just say the thrust setting is completely arbitrary um, meters per second per second so okay let's see if I can actually land this thing um, we haven't defined the conditions for landing either, have we? So, um, we'll, well assume to... that zero was <laughs> yeah. But the, but the point is, you know, when you reach zero altitude, it very much depends what speed you're doing, right? As to how survivable that is. Um, so, there'll be some limit basically where it'll be like everything's fine. Uh, fender's a little bent, but nothing serious, you know, and um, need a new lander, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so let's let's cut our velocity a little bit more so that we can just whisper in for a feather light landing. I feel like it needs to be more feather light. Okay, we're getting there. So now just nothing. We're accelerating a bit too much. So let's balance gravity. So let's, so I, let's say I want to land at uh, 10 meters a second. That's, what's that? That's uh, 0 0.01 kilometers a second, which is... Uh, I don't know how fast that actually is, but it sounds kind of survivable, doesn't it? So let's reduce a bit more. Okay, now just 10 to keep it balanced. Yeah, this is going to work. Perfection. Okay. 
So zero. Yep, that's the end. Great. Successful landing. Uh, this is very encouraging. So what should we do now? Should we define a safe landing? Or uh determine if we're going to be if we're going too fast for a landing and if it is a safe safe landing. So yeah, so uh when altitude reaches zero now we want to decide, you know, did we land at a safe speed or not? So if velocity is less than 10, let's say, less than or equal 10, we'll find out if that's <laughs> physically correct. Um, but that's, this is fine, so you win. Great. Otherwise, yep. Yeah. Try again. Okay. Let's just start a little nearer the ground just to test it. Mm, yes. Oh, I started at the ground. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. That makes sense, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, I feel like we should see the state before we compute the change to the state. And that kind of implies we need to do this first too. Um, okay, let's try. Um, hey, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's easy if we start from 100 meters up. <laughs> uh, let's try something not so good, let's do like minus 20. That seems wrong, doesn't it? We should have hit the ground at 30 meters a second. Um, oh wait though, this is negative, isn't it? So we want the absolute velocity. Yeah, this would make sense. Crash. Uh, let's, and it, it's a bit unfair to expect people to guess that, isn't it? So perhaps we'd better print out what you're supposed to do. Um, land safely at a vertical speed of. Uh, 10 meters per second or less. Yes. Okay. Very nice. Uh, yeah, so if we don't do anything. Let's see, we've got minus 100, so we're going to hit the ground at 100, which is no good. So if we give it 100, we'll have 0, but it will gain an extra 10 from gravity, so we should land at 10. So, yep, yeah, that looks fine. Let's, should we actually print out what the velocity was so they can see how well they did? Yes. Yep. Great. Hmm. 
Hey. Yeah, don't need quite so many decimal points. <laughs> uh, let's just have one. Yeah, that's good. What's this? Oh, I, I need a I need a new line though. Let's try crashing now. Nothing. Yeah, great. Very nice. So I think that's probably a commit point, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That will probably do for this episode. Oh, I, we actually got further than I thought we would. It's pretty good. So what's your analysis of, uh, you know, state of where we are now and uh, what we might do next sort of thing? Now we'll need to add a little more controls. For... Yes. Real-time control would be good, wouldn't it? Yes. Also, we don't have infinite thrust available, so <laughs> we should probably limit that to something. Right. Then at some point we can start to throw in a little more challenging um, wind speed or... Um, yes, not much of that on the moon, but... Well, um, but we'll say we wanted to add more more planets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I totally get that. Like, this, this is exactly the dimension that you start thinking along, isn't it? Is how could I generalize this yeah. to planets with an atmosphere, dust storms, um, Jupiter? Yeah, indeed. Um, and uh, so, for example, you know, of course, when you land, you land from orbit, so you are traveling at X kilometers a second, whatever the orbital velocity of the moon is, you'll be moving down range that fast. So you need to counteract that unless you've got a really long runway. <laughs> so yeah, unless you're landing at Edwards or something, you can't, uh, you can't land at orbital speed. Um, so uh, I think, I think with the lunar module, they actually just kind of cranked it over and thrust opposite to the direction of travel, didn't they, until they'd slowed down to sort of landing speed. And I also think they had little adjuster jets, yeah. um, reaction control jets, um, for fine control. Um, as uh, we know, Armstrong had to use those because the site they picked to land turned out to have a number of inconveniently large boulders in it. So uh, <laughs> he needed to move somewhere else and they were quite close to running out of fuel by the time mm -hmm. they got to that point. So that's the other thing, isn't it? Fuel. Yeah. We haven't taken account of that. So let's, let's put some to do's in which, uh, as you know, I explicitly forbid fuel. Um, what should we call it? Um, downrange velocity. Real-time controls. What else? Graphics is a possibility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could do ASCII art graphics, um, but I was thinking, you know, we could use um, some games toolkit to actually draw a window and draw a little lander, you know, right. and you can see it go up and down. Um, sure. yeah. Um, you know, not 3D graphics maybe, but uh, we could do 2D graphics. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, maybe maybe we could do it in a browser or something. Yeah, browser would be good. Because we could maybe try some um, some challenges, um, on screen challenges, where you know, like you said, you know, they had to move uh, the location. Yeah. So, so you, put, you put in a landing point and then uh, maybe that landing point is, or you're giving a landing point and now you need to change yeah. your landing point because uh, of a, a challenge in, in front of you. Yeah. To your creator or something. Let's say diversion. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. 
So great, that's a nice little to-do list, isn't it? But I think we've proved the concept. Absolutely. So this is very good. So, and also what we might start to do is start turning this into a package, mm -hmm. which has some tests, um, and then work out, you know, for driving this from the CLI, how do we drive that? Um, so that's really good. So we, we actually wrote a little physics engine, didn't we? Sure did. Which is cool. I like it. Okay, thanks very much for your help on that one. Much appreciated. Always. I'll see Thank you next you. time. Yeah.